Hello everyone, this is Sean and welcome to a brand new series that we're uh, going to do here. This is called, uh, for a game called Production Line. This is a brand new game from Positech Studios. Um, that is the studios that brought us Big Pharma and Democracy 3, I think is probably uh, one of their most uh, famous titles. Um, Big Pharma is a game that I own and played and uh, uh, really enjoyed. It's a little kind of puzzly uh so it kind of you know i don't know got a little 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 too repetitive there uh but on the other hand uh there's a lot of depth to it and uh, if i'd put a little more time into it um uh you know there's there there was a lot more to discover uh production line looks really interesting though it is a game about uh, making a car factory and um, there's supposed to be some business aspects to it. Uh, I haven't really learned a whole lot about it. I did load up um, one of their scenarios. Well, scenario is a little generous because this is very, very early. Uh, like the very first alpha was released yesterday. Uh, they upgraded it already today. It's at 1.01. .01. Um, but this is a very early alpha game. So... Uh, uh, I loaded it up and, and kind of got the hang of the controls, and I understand the basic concept of what we're supposed to do here, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we're going to go into this together, and um, uh, once again, I will remind you, this is a super early alpha version, so don't take uh, any criticisms that we have too seriously. Um, I really felt that uh, Big Pharma was a really polished game, and I heard a lot of great things about Democracy 3. Um, this uh, game designer definitely makes complex games that have a lot of deep interactions in them, and Production Line looks like it has a lot of that already. I watched uh, some videos that the, that the guy who made this um, made, and he has some pretty crazy factories going on. So uh, hopefully we can get into one of those. So we're going to start up a new game here. Hopefully all of this works out all right. Uh, you know, one thing I wanted to fix is adjust this volume a little bit, maybe. And uh, um, maybe that will balance out. I thought it was a little loud in the test video that I made. So let's go to new game. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with like a medium factory. Um, I tried starting with a small factory. Oh, already it's been changed because that was only 900,000 when I tried to start it earlier. So they probably did that to balance it out a little better. Uh, that seemed like a really difficult starting scenario. $2 million seemed like a pretty easy starting scenario. So since this is going to be my first factory, I don't know that there's any other difficulty factors in this. Um, I guess, oh, wow, crazy. Oh, so you can see a lot of, a lot of, this is, uh-huh. Uh, obviously kind of place, um, but that's cool. You'll be able to design your own little, uh, missions and stuff. How do I get out of here? No, no. Can I just escape out? There we go. Great. Um, well, that was interesting. So let's just play this mission. I don't know that there's any balancing factors right now. And, uh, from what I've read on the main forum, uh, it's, like the game's not super challenging at this point, but we're just going to try to get a good look at it. And uh, uh, like I said, it looks pretty fun. So the basics, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here. If you run out of money, the game's over. So you can't go below $0. So I need to keep that in mind. But a million, $2 million will be pretty good. It'll cost me about $700,000 to get this original production line set up. Um, there's no, not really any tool tips. I mean, there's some basic tool tips, I guess, on here. Um, but uh, there is not like, here's what this does, and here's how you need to do this. So you need to start at the top, more or less. These are actually conveyors, so uh, as you'll see, they don't have to be done first. But we have a chassis assembly, a fit body thing, a paint station, a fit engine station, fit accessories, electronics then a QC and export and so like that's the chain to get the cars built now within each of these chains there's additional chains and then within each of those chains there's additional chains too so we're going to start this out very simple but the idea we're going to get bottlenecks I'm pretty sure it's the body 
of one that gives you your first major bottleneck. And uh, you need to use research and, uh, and just general efficiency to try to get around that. So let's go ahead and start out with the chassis assembly. And as you can see here, ah, another improvement from, uh, from the original, or from the version I was playing, is they have those arrows on there to point which way things go. So that's real handy. I wonder if you can, um, can you edit? I cannot. All right. Uh, I was wondering if you could edit these setups because the, uh, um, first off, I don't even know if you're going to be seeing the, if you're going to be seeing the mouse cursor in this video. Um, but if you can, right over here, there's the stockpile and that's where the, uh, uh, product will go. So it'd be nice if you could rearrange it to where like the stockpile was on one of these other corners or something. If I flip it around, it'll be pointing the other direction. So, or if you could just designate which direction the, the belt goes in. I know I'm saying an awful lot for barely having started the game. I think I've only made two cars in the little test game that I set up and then I was like, oh, I'm good enough. I can, I can run this on a regular version. All right, so that's the fit body, right? All right, then we're going to do paint. And uh, so what I'm thinking by leaving three open spaces here, so we'll be able to run belts in and out, and then we can run a conveyor down the middle. And I think that should be enough room. Uh, and basically, as we research, we will d develop the chains out this way and then have them bring the cars up and then we'll develop those chains out too, hopefully. Uh, it's really hard to say, and I don't know if I'm leaving enough room, but that's why we're going to learn this game. So fit engine, right? That was the paint one that we just did, it looks like. And uh, there's the engine. And uh, we'll go ahead and put some accessories on here, and we'll turn this up like that. And that should be good. And that's the end. So when you, um, when you exit, you have to exit out through one of these garage doors here. We're going to do that. We're going to stick the QC just right up against that. And we'll stick the electronics right up against that. And now what we need to do is just connect these by conveyor. Now the conveyor, you should, if you just click and drag, it should do it in the direction. You can see the little arrows along the side of the belt there. It shows the correct direction. And I don't understand why this shows us $174,000. It showed that when I played earlier, too. There's $67,000. Is that the cost of placing that equipment and now I can see the prices on all those things oh maybe it's because the game is paused and uh, like those little prices want to fly up into the air but they're not doing it because the game is paused that sort of makes sense can I do that oh cool all right so we've got the conveyor belts and all of our machine things laid down so now we're gonna we need to set up a resource importer and this will bring in the parts that we will then send along a conveyor. Now, the conveyors seem to have some sort of interesting rules of their own that I haven't quite figured out yet. And I, I, I believe they're one way, but I'm not really sure how to tell which one way they are, if that makes any sense. Um, but I think we're going to have these three service those ones. And then we'll bring another one in from over here. And it can take care of the stuff over on this side. So I need a resource importer right there and a resource conveyor, which is going to end up going across and end up going up there. And I guess, you know, you could just go like this and then we'll just bring you like that. And then we'll run you across over there to there. Excuse me, and I believe that's everything we need. So let's uh, close that up and then turn the game on. And there goes all of our little money stuff. So we spent about seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, kind of like I expected. And I don't know why the um, those are kind of shaded out. Oh, because I'm zoomed out at that point. And uh, now we just get to watch. We get to watch them build. So it brings in stuff on these lines, and then that fills up our little storage area there. And um, you can see it's filling up the paint storage area with paint. And I don't know what it's uh, filling up this fit body thing with. Um, and over here. So make some strange decisions on how it decides what's going to go into the stockpile. 
But I like that you can see, like, here's how it's using its time. Most of its time is spent running. Uh, because this is a game about efficiency, it's really nice that it helps you understand where you're efficient at. So there must be five steps involved in this. I guess one step to go with each of the uh, components that it has. Um, oh, I still don't get why it only has four components in the in the uh, stockpile, though. Uh, but as I said, the fit body area is where we're going to run into our first... Because look at all those steps involved in this thing. And this is where we're going to run into our first uh, bottleneck. Because uh, it's going to take a while for these cars to get through this area. We'll speed it up a little bit. I haven't looked to see if there's any hotkeys for that. But like uh, the time would be a good one. Um, no... Ah, good. You can click and drag now to, to move the screen. That's good. Uh, so the paint uh, paint shouldn't take too long. It's going to spend most of its time waiting. Although it has multiple steps, it must do uh, multiple... Uh, oh, yeah, undercoat. A lot of, a lot of details. Uh, no rotating the camera. Um, no, page up and page down. Zooms in and out. I guess home and delete. Insert end. Arrows. Arrows do the arrow thing. All right, uh, paint finish. I like how each ta task, individual task, takes a different amount. Like it goes at a different speed as well. And then dry finish. That's taken a while. Cool. So how how long along is this car? Okay, so the painting doesn't take too much. Yeah, see, insufficient resources. Like that doesn't. How does it have insufficient resources? Like, it's got a half-empty stockpile. Why does it have insufficient resources? Why didn't it have those items in the stockpile to begin with? So that's probably a bug. Um, I saw somebody had commented about that on the forums, that their stockpiles stockpiles might need a little bit of, um, a little bit of uh, improvement there. Maybe if we're lucky, the, um, the uh, uh, developer will actually watch some of these videos. Um, I don't know if he will or not, but, uh, uh, you know, it's going to be a good example of, um, uh, you know, potential bugs and stuff like we just saw there. Uh, we definitely should expect this game to be buggy. It's supposed to be pretty playable, and, and it looks, you know, it looks like it's going to be really fun and mostly clean of bugs. Um, but I'm not expecting, like, RimWorld and Factorial level of, uh, of uh, bugs at this stage, you know. Give it a, give it a few more alphas and uh, uh, I'm pretty confident that they'll have most of the bugs ironed out. This game is... Uh, I usually don't play a lot of early access, uh, which is funny considering that at RimWorld, I play RimWorld every single day. Um, uh, but there's only a few early access games that I really uh, feel confident in. Uh, RimWorld and Factorio are the two that I can think of right now. I, I have a couple others that I have bought Project Aura is one of them, and Project Aura has not gone the way that I had hoped it would. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't. Uh, maybe it's just that I don't like the game in general. It just seems really slow. Um, look at that. We have a finished car almost, but it needs to go up here and, and get the uh, get the QC and stuff done. Um, so, yeah, I don't play too many early access games. I bought Towns when Towns was new back in the day, and that one was kind of infamously a ripoff. And uh, that taught me a little bit of a lesson. Um, and although I've been pretty lucky with the successful early access games that I've bought, Prison Architect, Factorio, RimWorld, um, I still am reluctant typically to buy early access games. But here we are. We've got this one right now. And uh, 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 it's a, that's a sign of my confidence in the guy to be able to... Uh, to come up with a good game. So, uh, when you design a vehicle, you get to set the price that you want. Right now, you can set the you can set the uh, uh, premium pretty high, and um, not worry about it. Uh, we're gonna go. Uh, so, I guess that our car brand is gonna be vanilla, and um, we'll go in alphabetical order. So, uh, let's start with the vanilla antelope. And that'll be our entry level car here. So I don't know how QA is a feature, but, you know, that's fine. Um, save new design. And now that is up here in our showroom. And our, our cars will sit in the showroom uh, until they sell, which is why I'm charging such a high premium on it. 
because I know it'll sell eventually. Uh, and if it doesn't, I can always just lower the price later. It doesn't really hurt anything. From what I understand, as time goes by, you can end up with back stock of, of older cars, and uh, that's not, um, you know, not ideal. Uh, so uh, if, if we don't sell them soon enough, uh, you know, we'll just drop the price, and then that, that should burn through them pretty quick. Um, but uh, Cliff, Cliff is the developer's name, I believe. Uh, Cliff was just saying on his blog yesterday or today that uh, uh, that needs to be balanced for sure. You can see we just sold our car, so obviously we are uh, uh, the the price is not unreasonable for the pace at which we're getting these cars off the line. So what we want to do is speed things up, right? This this is our bottleneck here, the fit body section. So we are going to build a research office, and we will build that now. Can I? All right. Well, so you can't do that and drag the map. So we're going to build this stupid research office just right in the middle of everything. Um, can I? Okay. Oh, there we go. Great. Did that give me the money back, or did it charge me twenty-five thousand dollars to do that? Um, there we go. Research office. We'll build you. Can I rotate you? Cool. Let's do that. Put you right there. And I'm actually going to do two of you. No. Do you have like a consistent cost? It doesn't look like it. All right, so we were going with body. Body fit was our thing, right? So we'll go up body specialization. And then I believe that's gonna allow us to break down and do additional, um, oh, there, and we can see our research uh, slowly going up there. So that's because we have two research labs. And it does it, doesn't show the cost there. What does that do? Nothing. Uh, if we go to not options, what happens if we go to options? Yeah, it's the same as we were looking at before. If we go to money, we can see expenses, rent, wages, power purchase. Uh, there does not seem to be any f f wages involved with Research. I'm sure that some of the wages are going to, uh, like the research is probably coming out in wages there. Maybe it increased our rent or something. Hmm. Don't know. But we've sold three cars, made $90,000. So over here, income is green, expenses are red. Nice. So we're doing all right. Uh, we'll get uh, we'll get some improvements in our line here. Keep those cars selling. Oh, see, now we need to lower the price. Because they're not selling quite fast enough. We don't need to keep cars in our back stock. Cool, well. Probably speed it up a little more here. This is pretty neat so far. Definitely, you know, a lot of room to grow, but um, the factory that he had going on in his final factory was, was really complex. Like, they were making the uh, components in-house. Uh, so, like, all of these uh, things that I'm importing, the accessories and whatnot, he was making almost all that stuff in-house. All right, so we burned through those cars. Let's, um, let's readjust the uh, price on... No. Do I have to do it while it's in the showroom? There you go. Let's adjust that back up a little bit. Maybe like 9,500. At 11,000, they were sticking around a little too long. Well, 9,500, not quite high enough. So we'll adjust it again here once this next one gets in here. And there we go. So we'll adjust that to... Well, I couldn't adjust it fast enough. People love our cars. At that bargain rate of 30% price adjustment. So with this next one, we can just like, I guess it wouldn't even, is it still gonna go through here? Right, it's gonna skip this one entirely. And then we'll just, I guess we can delete that and we can just sweep up and go up this way and then come back down that way. So we might not even need all the room that I set up anyways. And we'll probably be breaking down the paint thing. All right, so we've got a few cars backed up in here now, so let's just leave it where it is because they're kind of hit and miss on whether we're going to sell out or not. 
How's our research coming along? Almost there. Cool. And there's some other stuff that they have too. There's uh, stockpiles. Where's the stock? There you go. Supply stockpile. So you can use that to store stuff in. I guess I could store a bunch of those uh, engine parts. What are those things? Pistons? Ah, oh, they're they're moving too fast for me. Um, oh my gosh, valves. So I could set up some weird uh, doubling up of the graphics there. All right. Um, can we slow the slow the game down? Not while we're in here. Okay, and also not while we're in here. So, what do I want to break down next? I felt like is the chassis, the paint was slowing us down, but maybe improved efficiency. I don't need factory expansion. I don't need to worry about our. Uh, Improving the uh, features of the car. Uh huh. Those are all additional features there. All right. So let's worry more about production. And uh, actually, let's get out of here and let's slow it down. There we go. Um, actually, let's pause it. And so now we have, right? This is the fit body. Okay, so now we have body frame, roof, and doors. 40 seconds for the body frame. Jeez, then that breaks down to all sorts of things. And what do each of those break down to? So, but, but you know what? I feel like the paint thing is, is t takes quite a while as well. So I think, I think we're going to research paint specialization next. Because uh, that's like a one-time thing, and then we should be able to break that one down into the number of pieces that that needs to go into as well. And we're going to lower the price a little bit on this, I think. All right. I'll close you down. Cool. Well, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and then we will go through and uh, set up this expansion or remodel. I'm not quite sure how to how to describe it, but we'll set that up. Um, to, to get our cars through a little faster maybe. Uh, do that at the start of the next episode. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Um, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, this is a brand new game, so there's not really a whole lot of information out there. I'll be going to the Logitech forums uh, to check up and see what's going on there. And uh, I, hope, um, uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this, and we'll come back for the next one. Uh, Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.